Mindy says, looking for suggestions for a child with ADHD. We already use glycine for sleep, mostly successfully, still, still tweaking dose. Should we do that in the morning too? What about tyrosine in the morning? We are working on keeping choline levels up, three ounces of liver per week on average. Just added some supplemental riboflavin too soon for a report. Anything else to provide nutritional support? Um, Mindy, I, you know, I have to confess that I, I haven't done a lot of research into ADHD yet. Um, but what I would say based on what I think I know about it is that first of all, a lot of, um, Carl says my microphone has fallen. If, if anyone, so a couple people are saying it sounds clear. Oh, is it? Can can a couple people confirm that the sound is better now? Okay, everyone says it's better now. Okay, thank you, uh, Mindy. I would say that uh, one thing that you could that you could experiment with would be GABA. And I don't know the doses to experiment with, but I do know that in adults, a hundred to eight hundred milligrams per day has been used in a couple studies showing effects in the brain. I say that because what, so one of the things that's going wrong in uh, ADHD is that the brain is not, the brain is not getting dopamine's signal that something is valuable enough to start paying attention to it. Or no, I shouldn't say that to keep paying attention to it. And Based on the drugs that are used to treat ADHD, it seems like the problem might be best characterized as generally low dopamine because it seems like the drugs that... I should back up for a second. So when we talk about dopamine, there's... And this is a simplification, but I think it's a good one. When we talk about dopamine, in there's... Um, two areas of the brain where it's really relevant to determining what you're paying attention to and how strong the hold is on your attention. In the, in the frontal cortex, we, which is controlling a lot of our decision-making, basically the more dopamine you have there, the more steady your focus is on something. So in that area of the brain, more dopamine is generally going to be more focused and less dopamine is going to mean less focus. But a huge, huge factor in actually making the decisions of what to focus on are in the basal ganglia, which is kind of like if you traced through here into the middle of your head, it's like sitting there at the base of that big wrinkly extension that has the frontal cortex in it. And the basal ganglia there is using two different, it's using dopamine in two different ways. There's a tonic amount of dopamine that's always there that just sort of sets the baseline tone. And then there's little tiny pulses of dopamine that last milliseconds that the spikes are caused by almost anything that is possibly worthy of your attention. And there has to be a certain threshold to cross. But as a general principle, and, you know, so there, there might be things that like are just under your perception or because of the way your brain's wired, certain things that do cross your attention, but they don't produce any dopamine spike because they just don't cross the threshold of how valuable they are to pay attention to it. But as a general rule, you know, almost anything is going to, is going to make one of these phasic pulses of dopamine. And, the background level of dopamine, the baseline tonic dopamine in the basal ganglia sets the tone of um, how big of a pulse do you need in order for something to be worthy of your attention. And so if the tonic level of dopamine is high, then those phasic pulses look smaller. And so um, the brain is less likely to judge something as worthy of attention and because of that, it's more likely to stay focused on whatever it has been focused on. The opposite thing is that if the, if the tonic 
level of dopamine in the basal ganglia is low, then it's really easy for a spike to come in and grab the attention of the brain because the baseline is so low that no matter how big that spike is, it looks really significant to the brain. So that's more like what's happening in ADHD because in ADHD, um, even if you put your attention onto something, the next thing is just <laughs> is just as grabbing. Like it's it's uh, it's harder to focus on something because everything coming at you could be equally worthy of grabbing your attention. So I think that there's, I think the drugs that are used to treat ADHD are acting on both of those pools. They're increasing the tonic level of dopamine in the frontal cortex, and they're increasing the tonic level of dopamine in the basal ganglia. In the frontal cortex, the increased dopamine is is making it um, is basically making more stable mental states. So if you focus on something, you will hold on to that better. In the basal ganglia, increasing the the tonic dopamine is making it harder for a new thing to grab your attention, which reinforces the fact that you are more focused. So. Anything that increases dopamine is going to be good. There's that. And in the basal ganglia, the tonic level of dopamine is primarily controlled by methylation. Now, it's true that if you just overall underproduce dopamine, that you'll have a low tonic level of dopamine in the basal ganglia. But you also don't want to overmethylate the dopamine pool because if you do, then you will reduce the tonic level of dopamine there, which is not what you want in ADHD. And so you don't want to do anything that is going to overmethylate. And the top thing that prevents overmethylation is the glycine. So one of Mindy's questions is, should I just use the glycine to promote sleep or should I also use it in the morning? And I would say, ultimately, you have to judge it based on the results you get, but you should try it at other times during the day because one of the roles of, the, of glycine would be to provide the buffer against excess methylation. And that's going to be one of the things that will help the tonic level of dopamine in the basal ganglia to rise up. And in the, actually, that's true in the frontal cortex too. So both in the frontal cortex, in both pools that we're talking about, um, preventing overmethylation will help the dopamine level to rise. Now, the second thing that becomes important is that in the basal ganglia, the way that dopamine signals in the phasic pulse, the way that that dopamine um, signals that something new is worthy of attention, and if we're talking about the first thing to pay attention to, like he needs to work on schoolwork uh, in the morning, that's the first thing he's paying attention to, this aspect of that is going to be important. Um, what The way that the way that it signals that is to overcome the uh, a tonic level of GABA that suppresses paying attention to everything else. To restate that in maybe a simpler way, for dopamine to make you pay attention to something that has value, you must have GABA suppressing attention to everything else. And dopamine cannot be a meaningful signal of placing of of the value of placing attention on something unless you have adequate GABA to suppress your attention paid to everything else. Because if you're paying attention to your schoolwork while you are also paying attention to your video games and to the mosquito in the corner equally as much, then you're not actually paying attention to your schoolwork. So I think that anything that would boost GABA would be helpful. And I think that... Um, Okay, so, uh, so yes, yes to the glycine during the day. Yes, you do want to keep choline levels up, but remember that choline is a methyl donor. And so you don't want to... Okay, so choline is a double-edged sword here. First of all, the choline is needed for acetylcholine. And when dopamine tells you to pay attention to something... Once you're paying attention, you need acetylcholine to get uh, to, to sustain your attention on that thing and get results. So dopamine is the signal that that thing has value to pay attention to. Acetylcholine is what you actually use 
to pay attention to it and get results. So you do want to help his acetylcholine levels, but you have to remember that choline is a methyl donor and that the more choline you have, the more important it becomes that the glycine is kept high enough to buffer excess methylation. Otherwise, choline could act as a double-edged sword and potentially wind up reducing dopamine levels. If that appears to be a problem, you might want to try alpha-GPC supplementation to get the, to get the acetylcholine because alpha-GPC is dramatically directed towards acetylcholine producing, uh, acetylcholine boosting rather than toward methylation, whereas every other choline is far more likely to, to play a role in methylation than it is to play a role in boosting acetylcholine. So, play, so experimenting with alpha-GPC would, would be one thing uh, ver, instead of choline. But if you are just making sure that food sources of choline are, are high, which is the more natural thing to do, and which is what I think you should do if you get results from it, then it becomes very, very, very important to pay attention to the glycine. Um, the, the other thing that I would add is the GABA, though, maybe start at hundred milligrams a day and work your way up to 800 and just, uh, be, you know, be careful with the low dose, see what results you get. If it seems promising, try increasing the dose. And then also, um, I'll, I'll post the link in the show notes and let me, um, make a note here to do that to a, uh, an episode of Chris Master John Light that I did on how to make your own GABA. So there's a lot that could be say, said about that, um, but I'll just you know refer you to that. Um, and I'll post a link to that in the show notes. All right, I thank you, Mindy, for your question. I hope that helped.